Hi, it's Kara and today we are filming a book haul. And not only is this a book haul, this is like a ridiculous book haul. I went a little bit overboard in April. At the time I was justifying to myself. I have, well I don't regret any of the books I chose, but I have a bit of a regret on how insane I went. Um, every time I went to the bookstore, I bought like three books or four books and like, Normally only half of them were the books I was intending to get. So this book haul has like 20 something books in it that we'll just have to get started, shall we? I just counted, there's 22 books. 22, how insane is that? These are in no particular order, they're just in the order I pick them up in. But first of all, we have Queens of Fenburn by Kendar Blake. I think that's how you say it, Kendara? Kendair, I, I was saying Kendair, but I've heard people lately say Kendara. Not 100% sure. This is a set of novellas. There's two novellas in this tiny little short book. And these are part of the Three Dark Crowns series. The third and final one comes out later this year. I'm so excited for it. Um, and I'm going to be reading this very soon. It just came out. I think, I think actually its release date's like the 8th of May, but it was at my bookstore. So I bought it. It's on my TBR for May, but that's another video. Then we have Far From The Tree by Robin Benway. This is another, another, this is one of my accidental purchases for the month, but I have heard amazingly good things about this. This is a YA contemporary following three kids who were put up for adoption or went into foster care, um, their siblings, and they're meeting up and finding each other for the first time. And I've heard amazing things about stuff by Robin Benway before. And I'm very excited to pick this up. I've heard great things about this one. Uh, it's gonna happen sometime soon. I was also kind of like, contemporaries were speaking to me a little more this month than they had the past couple of months. Maybe it's just because it's now spring in the US so all the good releases for contemporary are coming out, but yes. Then we have The Smoke Thieves by Sally Green. This is another one that I didn't think was coming out till early May, but it was in store, so I picked it up. Um, this is the new release by Sally Green and is, um, I've read Half Bad, which I have here, but I never finished the series, but I always kept meaning to, I just never picked them up. Um, and this is a medieval fantasy on the theme of Game of Thrones and things like that. So I'm definitely keen to give this a try. I've heard some mixed things from people, but I've only heard a few snippets here and there. So I'm definitely keen to give this a try it myself and I'll be reading this in May. Then we have The Wicked Deep by Shea Earnshaw. This is a, uh, um, paranormal kind of story, uh, following this town in which um, these three witches, uh, three girls got drowned for witchcraft and then they every year they come back and haunt boys from the town and drown them and it's kind of short, it's only just over three, no not even, ju just 300 pages, so it's not very long but I've heard some great things lately, um, really spooky sounding and I, totally sounds up my alley so I'm very keen to read this. Then we have Red Sister by Mark Lawrence, this is an adult fantasy. Uh, the second book has just come out, which is Grey Sister, and this is Assassin Nuns. And it gave that, like, just that gave me a lot of um, Never Night and God's Grave vibes. Um, this is probably nothing like that, but um, Assassin's Fantasy. Things that are right up my alley. And Mark Lawrence has a decently good reputation. I've heard in some of his other series there's a bit of problems that, like, feminists uh, as I am one, <laughs> that have been um, causing problems there. Like he didn't treat women very well in his other series, but obviously this series has female lead characters, so that might be better, but then again, they might be overdone and sexualized, over sexualized, I don't know. But I've heard some good things about this and I'm keen to give it a try. It seems like totally my kind of thing. Then we have The Black Tides of Heaven and The Red Threads of Fortune by Ji Yang. These are a pair of tiny little uh, silk punk novellas. So silk punk is like Asian inspired fantasy steampunk kind of thing. Um, 
and this is supposed to be the start of a series they're twin novellas that kick off this series and I believe we follow twins and one of them can see all possible futures and one of them can see the future like the one future I believe though that's secondhand here I'm not 100% sure um, but they look really good and these covers are gorgeous I haven't read much Silk Punk before, but what I have read, I really enjoyed. So I'm very keen to pick these up soon. Then we have The Falconer by Elizabeth May. I meant to be getting this last month, but my package of books was delayed. This is one of those. This is a YA, I believe, um, a Scottish or Irish based, maybe Irish, maybe Scottish, Scottish, um, based... Yeah, I'm gonna guess, yeah, Edinburgh, Scottish, based um, fae book, and she's a fae hunter, um, or a falconer, and mm, mm -hmm. I've heard great things about this too, Sam from Thoughts on Homes read it a little while ago and loved it, um, and this is a trilogy, and everything just sounds like right up my alley, so I'm very keen to read this. I'm reading this in May, hopefully. Then we have The Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco. I do have to say this is quite a bit of a cover buy. Like, look how gorgeous that cover is. But um, I then, after I bought it, heard some great reviews from Piera at Piera Ford and a couple of other people who said they really enjoyed this and the sequel. So I had to get it. I just could not resist. It's, I mean, I'd bought it already, but I'm very happy that I bought it because it is gorgeous. This is about necromancy and mm, so excited. I think it also might have some Asian or um, Islander things. Asian, I think. Though, don't hold me to that because I haven't really done my research. Then we have The Last Name Sara by Kristen Cicerelli. And this is a YA fantasy following this uh, a girl named Asha, who is a, I think she's a girl. Yes. Um, who is a dragon slayer and that and the formatting really sold me. It has these little like snapshots that are like fitted in. It kind of gave me Aragon vibes and although I'm so late on the party I've only read the first like one and a half Aragons and I that was so long ago I need to reread them but I loved those and uh, the books and this was giving me that kind of vibe so I was all about this dragons also when I bought this the lady at the bookstore said she recently read it and loved it in like my stack of other books I was buying so positives then we have the disturbed girls dictionary by Nonika Ramos and this is a, a young adult thriller I believe about this girl who's been put away for being disturbed but I don't think she's actually disturbed um, by that I mean I think they think she's a bit um, schizophrenic or something um, and there's child protective services and all kinds of stuff um, I am so excited for this it's a nice knife on the dust jacket uh, on the underneath um, this is told as you can probably tell by the title, in a dictionary style format, each chapter is started, I landed on one that's called Breasts, but yes, starts um, with like a word and the meaning in her context. So formatting, interesting formatting, tick, that is there for me. I haven't read a young adult thriller in a long while, but I do normally really enjoy them, tick, yes for me. Um, written by, I believe, a woman of colour, tick, yes for me, yes, I think so, um, and yeah, this just was ticking all the boxes, it looks so good and it's a little bit velvety, I'm very excited to read this. Then we have uh, To Like to like the Lightning by Ada Palmer, this is book one of the Terra Ignota series, um, there's currently three out, but I believe it's still ongoing. Um, this is a uh, futuristic science fiction novel that I heard described as like this author just building a sandpit for her to play for herself to play around in and that excites me immensely 
Um, this is told in like a historical kind of format. Um, it has a lot of like um, tables and stuff. Again, interesting format. Is a tick for me. And I was really, I've been really in the mood for sci-fi. So I picked this one up. I hope I can read it soon. So I'm really excited for it. I just want to like absorb, inhale all of these books, like all of them. If I could read them all at once, I would, but you know, I have a limited time and a limited ability to put things into my brain. Then we have In Other Lands by Sarah Reese Brennan. This is a beautiful, I believe it's blue. Yes, hardback book. Um, I haven't read a Sarah Reese Brennan solo book before. I've read her like novellas with Cassie Clare, but her style is totally my kind of thing. And this is a subversive mermaid book. Um, sounds awesome. Again, interesting formatting. This has like four chapters in this whole beast of a thing. Um, they're just like the different years in our main character Elliot's life. And I just, I'm so excited for this. It looks amazing. I'm definitely going to be reading it sometime soon. Can you tell I don't really know that much about it, but I don't care. It's gorgeous mermaids. Also the tagline says, what's your name? Serene. Serena? Elliot asked. Serene, said Serene. My full name is Serene Hart in the chaos of battle. Elliot's mouth fell open. That is badass. That's all I needed. I was like sold right there. If that doesn't sell you, I don't know what would. Like, amazing. Can you tell I love filming hauls? They're just my favorite. Next up, we have Gathering Darkness by Morgan Rhodes. This is book three in the Fallen Kingdoms series. I think it's just plain black. It's just a plain black. I'd like to check anyway. Um, I read book one and two a couple of years ago now, I think. But I never picked up the third one. To have it ready to go even though i really enjoyed book one and two but i got them in hardback from the us so i knew i had to get the third one in hardback also and i finally did it i finally got my hands on gathering darkness and hopefully i'll be reading it decently soon this is a ya fantasy series following a big cast of characters game of thrones style and um is apparently like a li like the first two were a little bit trashy but really enjoyable and really fast paced um, like a little bit over drama trashy and apparently this one's where everything starts to really kick off so I'm very keen for that apparently book three and book four are like the best in the series so I'm super excited for this then we have a uh, wind witch and also sight witch by Susan Dennard I picked up both of these these were again part of the books that I'd ordered and didn't arrive for last month um, as was gathering darkness actually these are book two and 2.5, but technically it's a prequel, so like 0 0.5 of the, um, what are they called? Witchlands Saga by Susan Dennett. I read Truth Witch the other month, loved it, absolutely adored it. Um, has great strong female friendships and things like that, and it was fabulous. The magic system is all about these witches, but they're not witches, they're more like just magic users, but they call themselves like something witch based on their power. So the first one's Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, you kind of get the gist. Um, these are, those were the first one, Truth Witch, is fabulous. So I'm very excited to read Wind Witch and follow on with Sight Witch, which is a little cute novella and it has tickled edges. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Then we have Ace of Shades by Amanda Fruity. This currently actually has my bookmark in it because it is my current read, um, obviously. It's currently like the last day in March, in um, April, but it's never going to get read tonight. I'm like hardly started. This is a, um, another YA fantasy, but this time with like a casino, Ocean's Eleven, Sin City feel. Um, in fact, it's called Welcome, it says Welcome to the City of Sin. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. That's about all I know about it. Casinos, heists, that kind of thing. Um, and our main character, N, is trying to get her mum back. Bark, bark. <laughs> He's trying to get her mum back. And yes, it's really fun so far, but I am like hardly any way into it. Look out for this in my May wrap up. Then we have Fury Born by Claire Legrand. This is another new big 
YA fantasy. Can you tell I've been in a fantasy kick? Um, and this is kind of beastly, but it is tall as well. And the like font is not tiny, so it shouldn't be too awful to get through. This follows two women in two different centuries. Centuries? Yes. Um, and how their stories intertwine. That's about all I know, but it sounds amazing. This is definitely, I've been planning to read this in April and it did arrive at the bookstore. In fact, it arrived at the bookstore a little bit earlier than release date, but um, I, I was very ambitious in April, so it didn't get read, but oh well, it's definitely on the cards for May. So I shall be reading this very soon. Next we have Price Guide to the Occult by Leslie Walton. This is Leslie Walton's second release. The first one being The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, which I adored. I also adored this, but I'll talk about that more in my wrap up. This is a kind of like witchy, um, magical realism, but it's very magical. Like it's very obviously magical, but it's grounded in like a realistic setting. Um, which is kind of what Leslie Walton's known for. Um, this one has a beautiful texture. It's like a uh, hyper matte um, and a, a hard jacketless hardback. And it's everything. So, you know. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller, another one I've already read. This is a uh, retelling of the myth of Circe. She's featured in Odyssey. But she may be in other things as well. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I love Madeline Miller's writing. I love The Song of Achilles and I loved Cersei, but we'll talk about that more in my wrap up. I do also have a review up for this somewhere on my channel, which I'll try and remember to link to. Um, but yes, I don't know how, the, uh, how else to describe this, but her stuff is amazing. The Song of Achilles is amazing. This is amazing. Just read them. Then we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is um, a novel told in verse and follows our main character, Siomara, who is um, a Dominican-American um, girl who's dealing with very Catholic parents, um, her gay twin brother, who's not out to their parents, and her trying to like question well she's questioning her faith and all that kind of stuff through poetry and this is amazing read it already we'll talk about it in my wrap up but i bought this and finally we have the astonishing color of after by emily xr pan this was the ya rooms april pick of the month i believe i read this as well this this is one i also read so you'll see more about it in my wrap up i do also have a review up for it this um, is a beautiful story following Lee, whose mother has just died from suicide and she's uh, half Taiwanese, like her mother was Taiwanese, and she's trying to reconnect with her heritage and she thinks she's seeing her mother in the form of this big red bird and it's just beautiful. Beautiful, I would 100% recommend this. It is so good. Go check out my review and I'll be talking about it more in my wrap up. So those are the 22 books I bought in the month of April. Yeah, I went a little insane. I'm staring at them over there. I went a little insane. <laughs> oh well, no regretty. I like books, no regrets. So anyway, comment down below if you've read any of these, tell me what you liked and what you maybe didn't like so much. Um, feel free to chat with me with many, you know, don't put spoilers in the comments. That's not fair on other people, but feel free to come chat with me on something else like Twitter. If you've read any of the ones that I've mentioned, I've read and you want to come chat with me about them. I would be willing to chat. My Twitter link is in the box down below. And other than that, I will see you soon with another video. Okay. Bye.